So welcome and thank you for joining us. Uh, this uh, panel we thought we'll, uh, we'll design around how do we get actionable value by uh, digitizing the facilities operations. So we put together a panel where like we have a, a company like Fast Extending, company like CureFit, uh, where uh, the, the properties are like smaller in size but hundreds in numbers. And then on the other end, we have Thomas uh, from the airport's background where huge properties and maybe dozens in number. And we also have uh, Sandeep from Prestige Group where, where they have like dozens of probably like 30, um, I don't know, like maybe 20, 30 million square feet. Right. Yeah. So, so it is, it will be good. We thought like, how do we, how do you go after digitization in your domain? and what is that you have tried and then how, what, what kind of insights we can get. So we'll get started. Uh, so it would be good like if you can um, let us know a few uh, digitization process that you are currently doing and uh, what kind of value that you are able to realize post digitization. Okay. Thank you Prabhu. Um, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, it's, it's a great audience and I think so like-minded folks are all around. Um, I get to learn a lot from seniors all around here and, and, and you know, the, the, the previous session has actually opened up new things which, which I have currently not been exposed to as well and every moment that I spend and talk to folks here, I think so, I'm getting enlightened. Um, for us to actually digitize the entire space, uh, we are still only about technically about 18 months into the into the business. Um, we are we are scaling in at a speed where I have not been able to um, take a break and and think about how how do I actually use once I actually digitize uh, the entire facility. Uh, but you know this has been top of my mind with regard to what is the value add that I would actually bring to the organization by just not having to put or incur cost, uh, but try and use value add services from digitizing the entire facility. How can I actually create a central command system where I actually get enough information sitting at one location wherein we are actually spread thin and wide uh, by not actually deploying manpower there. What I'm trying to do is or what, what I would ideally want to do is not try and cut down on manpower, but try to utilize the manpower uh, to the most optimal level. It doesn't make sense in us actually knowing the information, but trying to use that information, like you know we've been talking since morning, which, which will actually add uh, enough value to the system. Um, within our company or within any company, uh, you know, our leaders might not be too cognizant with regard to uh, digitizing the entire space uh, because they would probably see it as a cost, especially for a startup, right? So it becomes that much more important for us to actually uh, understand the subject, understand the matter, and go with a value proposition to, to make people understand, f to make operations understand, and accept the fact that, you know, digitization is the way forward. Yeah. Uh, so, when you started, like at what stage uh, you started thinking about digitization? Is it something like you, are, you built out uh, your first 40, 50 outlets and then you found out that you're not able to handle it, so you put in some digitization efforts or was it from day one that you had something in place that uh, when it comes to digitization? So I would actually be lying if I'd say that I had some kind of, some form of digitization from day one. Uh, I was made very well aware that, you know, cost is something that we should be very cognizant uh, in terms of how we run operations. But this has been at, on top of my mind, like I mentioned before. Um, we did try and do a few initiatives which actually helped us in terms of digitization, small steps like, you know, uh, installing CCTVs, but being at a central location and, and being able to monitor what's currently happening. Well, me or the management or the operations did not know what do we do with that kind of a, uh, uh, infrastructure, but, but we were very clear that, you know, uh, we have an infrastructure which we could actually use of. Um, it's only about 100 plus centers post is when a quality team within the organization has been created 
who has a dedicated manpower sitting in a uh, silo room reviewing how we could actually utilize the CCTV footage which is actually being displayed in terms of are the is the center getting opened on time? Uh, are the classes starting on time? Uh, is the workout of the day in terms of what we've actually de uh, what we've actually decided centrally and and being followed on a pan India basis? So that's still baby steps that CureFit as an organization has actually done. Um, but there are other verticals that other touch points that we've actually uh, introduced within the center. Um, apart from CCTV, like, you know, your fingerprint scanner, we are actually in advanced stages in terms of, uh, it's, it, I wouldn't call it as a BMS, uh, but I would actually call it as a command center which can actually remotely operate uh, the entire infrastructure without a manager on duty being, uh, being able to even lift a finger. So, uh, to answer your question, it was there on top of my mind, uh, but we've, We've been, we've been scaling slowly with regard to how we could actually digitalize the entire, digitize the entire premises and we've been figuring out as to what are the advantages that would actually come to us at some pace as well. Okay, yeah, thank you. I saw some nice uh, videos when I came to your office. I'll come back on that. How sure. do you do that? Sure. Uh, so coming to, like, uh, Sandeep, can you uh, give some th ideas about how, what are the, uh, specifically, what are the digitization steps you have taken and uh, what kind of value you are able to see from that? Sure. Good afternoon, everybody. Like we at Prestige, uh, we work uh, in uh, four definite uh, lines. Like we start from commercial properties, residential properties, retail and hospitality to begin with, if we understand it correctly. And I basically look after the commercial part of it and residential part of it of prestige properties. Now, like looking for a data download, we as we all asset managers or so-called facility managers, we as a way forward, we are looking for a definite data which will add up to our measures and add value for a business advantage. And for that, we have individual aspects, whether it is an energy saving devices, whether is it water saving devices. In isolation, we are doing so many things. And I'm candid enough in saying and sharing with you because we do so many aspects for value adds in terms of water saving, energy saving, or, or take any other data downloads, which like for your uh, HVACs, chillers, efficiencies, there are various uh, protocols are there which is in place. Now, per se, to have a single platform, to have a digital download, first a knowledge transfer, to have the data download which we should have at our respective commercial properties, which we can have a definite showcasing the data day to day, what our assets are performing, or, or how we are managing those assets. Post that, we should have an understanding from subject matter experts. Now, so many of them are sitting here. I'm in touch with them, like Abhilash is here. Prabhu is sitting here. So we are looking for, way forward is this. That is data download, data sharing, and then post that, we should all have an understanding of things where we can add value going forward, whether in terms of saving water. We all Bangaloreans know very well the importance of water in terms of water savings for commercials, residential, retail, or any other property for that matter. Water is a scarce resource per se. So if we can, if we can understand the data's download for our advantage, yes, I'm for it, prestige is for it, and we are looking for those options, how best we can make our buildings more efficient, bring value to our residents, which are staying in our villas and high esteemed high-end properties all across Bangalore and down south. So we are open and up for it. Okay. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, it's coming to Tom, like, um, so you come from a very interesting combination where 17 plus years with Apple, and then uh, interestingly AMP 
uh, as higher due, maybe which is probably they want the technology as part of their portfolio. Um, so, so this digitization, see, what, what I always wish is, I, I say this example in many places where today there, is a, there are enough technology available. If somebody has, say, 10 restaurants, small 10 restaurants, there, are, there is tech available where they can put and then sit at their home and know that as of now, uh, 12, 20, what is my sales? Which dish has been ordered um, a lot? And uh, what, is, what, what is that I can, uh, what offer I can make or what special dish I can make? They have that level of insights and technology. Why can't somebody like uh, Prestige or even somebody managing airports have that level of data where they are able to know what is happening now? Okay, that is the ultimate thing of digitization, but it is easier said than done. So that's a whole question of like, what is that practically being done? So coming from Apple to uh, airports, uh, can you share some sure. insights? So uh, again, thank you for the invitation, and uh, I as well enjoyed Roger's presentation uh, as an opening to the event. So I guess you're wondering, what is a private equity firm doing in a facilities management? So thank you for setting the cue on that. So AMP Capital is one of the second largest uh, owners of airports, as, uh, as uh, he's mentioned. So I'm looking at how we can optimize uh, technology to improve the airport experience. So one of the projects that we're doing uh, that I'm leading for uh, the airports, and unfortunately we have no airports in India yet, but very soon, um, is to try to digitize the passenger f workflow through uh, the entire journey of the experience. And we're starting from when you're driving to the airport to when you're getting on your plane. So um, one of the pilot airports we're doing that is in Leeds, uh, Leeds Bradford, which is a medium-sized airport that we own in the UK. And like you mentioned, we are trying to optimize uh, more about how we understand the passengers so we can optimize the, the, the facilities environment to improve their experience, right? So we're just starting, but we are looking to uh, potentially use Facilo as one of the catalysts of that change across all the 14 airports we use. So the pilot is going to actually show us how we digitize each of the passenger steps through the parking, through the luggage, through the security. And one of the biggest problems we have is that we acquire these airports. They're generally built by other people, so we have to try to improve them and make them better. Uh, so we can actually improve the experience. So one of the issues that we have is that a lot of the systems don't talk to each other within, within the airport. So their focus is usually the air side and security, and it's not about the passenger flow. So we're trying to connect the two ends of the airport and make it a complete experience through understanding the passenger as they go through each of the different workflows. So that's, that's, that's what we're doing right now. Okay. Thank you. And um, I'll just do a small rapid fire where, um, okay, uh, so it, is, it can be like optional, you can participate. Uh, can you um, uh, give like one thing, like if you want to pick or you, you have it in your immediate roadmap, this is what I want to do, uh, digitize and create value. Um, the, the specific aspects, you might have like air quality or water or energy or people, whatever it is. From, uh, from your immediate roadmap, what are the things you feel like low hanging where you want to go on? attack? I would probably um, say about air quality because people within our centers, it, it depends upon how optimally they could work is equals to what is the quality of air and the atmosphere that I would actually give. So how, how a person is actually feeling within a center apart from the music or apart from the workout or apart from what the energy in the, uh, in the center is, what what is the optimal level that a person is actually walking in or, or being there for quite some time? So I, I would probably give preference to air quality. Uh, that is something, we, we already have uh, uh, air quality monitors within our system. Uh, we are working with a company um, um, who, who is not only tracking but is also sending data back to a central location with regard to what is the real time quality of the air. Um, it could be uh, it could be at the start of the class or the middle of the class or the end of the class as and when the needle actually goes beyond a certain point the s the quality team gets a trigger so that's something that we are piloting at all our centers so air quality for me will be the topic great for, for, for me is like water is the in the center of my thought process because uh, to bring awareness amongst all of our clients employees 
and uh, each touch point should be well cognizant of the fact that water has to be treated with respect. We somehow take it very lightly and granted with this resource and then we need to be very sensitive towards judicious utilization of water every single day. This is my primary focus and looking forward for it. In addition to that, the waste disposal is also very, very dear to me because we can't just throw anything or everything here and there. It has to be sanitized in a manner the way it has been in place, but we don't follow. We don't follow, but my aim is to bring that awareness and bring that change in each one of us, wherever I am, to, to you know, treat that with respect and the timely disposal as per process and policies. Yep. Sorry. Um, a quick fire back. Uh, for AMP Capital, or let's say airports in general, one of the key things I would say is a low hanging fruit is managing all the um, various vendors. So we have a lot of vendors at airports, security, uh, maintenance, and managing those vendors, managing their ins and outs, the time stamps, the security stamps. Uh, is, is a key concern that we're trying to do. Okay. So that's a low-hanging fruit we'd like to go after. It's like visitor management for vendors yes. with a security emphasis. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And the maintenance programs and all those okay. things. So, okay. Next, uh, another rapid fire. Try to answer in 20 seconds. Uh, so can you name one digitization effort that you did and uh, how long it took for you to realize the value? Is it within months or years or... Maybe you, you never realize you failed. I cannot talk about years because our digitization project has not been so long. But um, I, again, like I mentioned about the air quality, right? I mm. mean, today I'm actually sitting on the uh, I'm actually sitting on enough data which can actually talk about what have been by pain points, right? Is it in fact the quality of air is determining whether I need to open up a center on a high street or slightly off high street. Right, so we are taking, we are using data at, at, at that scale. But, but, but having that installed at around you know multiple centers has taken quite a bit of time, mm -hmm. right? Because there is a physical intervention, human intervention, uh, accept uh, acceptance, and understanding the product. So, yeah, it, it 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 does take some time for us. For me, in the, it took almost two quarters to have the download for water and probably a quarter more is going to take to finalize and you know to execute that aspect like how I will utilize the data download for my advantage, business advantage, probably a quarter more. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I'll answer quick. So we digitized, a, we created a common equipment pool at Luton Airport in London. Uh, it's a primarily a value focused airport within Europe and many of the, air, the airlines wanted to have their own equipment and we, we decided to create a common pool and we IR uh, and IOT each of the pieces mm -hmm. to create a common pool. So it was about an 18 month project. Mm -hmm. Only after 18 months did all the airlines realize that they could input into their needs and it worked. The first 12 months were very hard, mm -hmm. but the last six months of the 18, we got it right and now it's working very well. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And so one commonality of what I see is when the, among all three of you, at your scale, um, see traditional way of looking at it is you go and pick up some computer-aided facilities management or asset management tools. Um, those are like very siloed things. Like from what uh, um, uh, uh, Srinivas is saying, like I think there is a need for um, uh, how can you own that thing where you you decide this is what I want across my enterprise. This is a platform I want, and instead of relying on my contractors coming and giving, uh, you may have to define uh, for an airport, for an or a cure fit, for our prestige. What is that they want as part of a digitization platform? And completely relook at traditional way of buying. So traditional way of buying is as part of typical FM contracts. You, know, you will pay for it and then it comes. It becomes a problem when you have 50 buildings and you are having three FM contractors, three people bring in three different things, but data is not by, owned by you. You're not learning into it. So are you already looking at some, some sort of things or uh, what is that? See, we definitely are. In fact, I, would, I, I, I wouldn't um, challenge the fact that, you know, most of us who are sitting here, would, people would still want to digitize their entire space and try 
try to see how we could actually make it easier. But we all need to also understand that you know these are assets. Um, and it's not like a software code that I actually enter it once. And if I write a code and it's actually going to run on an autopilot mode and it is and it'll never actually break. Any kind of digitization will still have an intervention of human. Uh, so implementing them usually takes time. Right? So what we need to actually be cognizant is that you know how soon can I actually do it? What are the benefits that I would actually get and what will I actually do with that data? That's something that I would actually look for. So, so one insight I have got is uh, talking to three of you is that, um, uh, say for example, in markets like Middle East, we are seeing a lot more emphasis on the workforce aspect of it. So how do you bring in digital trace of what work is being done by whom, um, uh, what is the quality of work and how to track it, how to measure it. But now I see that there is a lot more emphasis on experience here from at least from uh, what I heard from three of you, um, Sandeep is more emphasis on like water aspects. You are looking at more on the air quality, health aspects, and uh, even uh, in airports is more on like security types. So this is one thing like I'm able to see where the regional difference in India, where uh, the emphasis is here more than the workforce itself. So, so one any thing, one thing I want to add here is like we at Prestige, uh, we are very very customer focused, right? Customer centricity is at the, you know, in center of our thought process. And to begin with, like we have got different uh, segments to begin with, acquisition of uh, land parcels, followed by our leasing team coming into play. Then uh, our CRM team, those uh, will be in interface with our clients. Post that is our uh, uh, prestige uh, property management systems come into place. So like we are looking for something akin to who can manage all the line items for me at a single platform rather than having individual uh, subject matter experts and then I'm converging it. So we are still uh, looking for options and then thinking at the top level to have those in place for the my customers advantage looking forward. Okay. Right.